Hey everyone, it's Ted, and today I'm going to be starting it. Uh, another painting project, but this time instead of doing fantasy, we do a little historical. Uh, today I'm painting up um, some English Civil War for, for a skirmish game I'm working on. Uh, these are Warlord games. Um, Pike and Shot Infantry Regiment, so this is standard infantry regiment. And gives me more than enough troops to start one side. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a um, royalist force, um, and their little handy guide they come with. I'm gonna be doing the the mark the Marquis of Newcastle, which is a white white jacketed regiment. So I said so this is for skirmish, so you don't need a lot of guys. So basically, it's, it could be two units of musketeers, five man musketeers, one unit of pikemen. And an officer and a sergeant, and that's all the forces you need for the skirmish. So, since, since it's going to be a white coated, the white's going to be the, the lightest color. We'll start with that, and, and then white primed. So, let's go around and just I'm using apothecary white. And just work your way around. You get get them all. Get all the white cover. And never forget up 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 underneath this musket on, on the end of your arm. For some reason, I always miss that. So that's it. They, these are not too difficult to paint because there's not much. Uh, the musketeers actually have more stuff on them than the pikemen do, so. So, let me go through, get these five painted, and I'll be right back. All right, so I got the white done. Now I'm going to work, now I'm going to do the skin. So you got their face and their hands. You can also down toward the legs under the, under the pantaloons. Yeah. You can either go with stockings or you can paint the skin. Some have like socks slid down. Well, not, so I got some bare skin, some don't. So, a uh, little gilliam in flesh. And what I like to do with this is thin it out a little. Oops. So, put some, whatever kind of palette you're using. Let's just take some water and just. If you get a bit too thin, add a little bit more back into it. What that does, it thins it out. So when you paint it on, the white makes the highlight. Because I'm also going to be putting a brown wash on top of this too. So it's, it's also going to... Brown or black, I haven't decided. I might go with black, make it a little bit darker and stronger. But, yeah. Get down there as it they go through. So we do a little, we thin it out with water, you're making it like a little, it's a wash, so it, it runs down into the the crevices, so it darker in the crevices, it's lighter on top. Yes, well, light down the show. So when it goes on, it runs down, but it keeps also a coating on top, so it gives you it gives you a highlighting effect. That's it. And then I'm putting another wash on top of this to darken it down, leave it more, so it's going to help out. And once you start, if you gave the English Civil War, you start reading it. Hey, you talk about pol pol politics gone amok. Kind of started off as a lot, a lot of politics. Agree with who 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 has the right to rule Parliament or the King. King says God made him ruler, so 
the divine right, which is which has been used throughout history. And probably says no, you rule by the people. So the argument there, and the king overstepped his bounds in a couple things, and started pushing, shoving, and the war broke up. It also became a religious war too between the Parliaments of Catholic, which was kind of part of that too, for about a hundred years between between the Parliaments and Catholics. And but during the war, the Parliament we, we became Puritans, which were the very far right of the religious order. They were the, the really strict against the Catholicism, which also split Scotland, which which so. It was the English Civil War, but it was also a Scottish Civil War, too, and a Welsh Civil War, so. It wasn't all English. Everything was split down the middle between. Just like any Civil War. So, both sides raised armies. And and the, the regiments were raised by rich uh, landowners or nobles and stuff. So, that's why you get to all the different colors, because you raise your regiment, you, you pay for the uniforms, equipment, and everything. So they picked their own colors and stuff. That's why you get the nice motley colors and stuff. So let's see. So on them, they have straps. They got their pants or pantaloons, which can be any color you want. And it looks nice if you do all those in different colors and stuff because it breaks it up and stuff. So I'm just going to go through and just pick a bunch of different colors. So I'm going to do a green. So you just go through and just. So once you start working on English and start reading it, and it become wild. What went what went on and stuff. It's just like any civil war, like American Revolution, which is technically a civil war. Because it was fought between Englishmen. Might have been over here in America, but it's, there were still Englishmen, so technically it was still a civil war. It, politics and an American civil war. And how the English civil war ended is when Parliament with some forcefulness behind them. So I did two green. So yeah, it's going to be a total of ten guys. So you can do a couple different. Paint a couple of the same ones. Because it's all going to be mixed up anyway. So, yeah. so I'm, putting, I'm putting like a wash on top of this. So a lot of these colors are going to be dulled down anyway. Into more uh, earthy. Colors. As I always talked before, I was like, I even missed some skin on this guy. I said, I got these guys. They got some legs shown down here. Not in the back, so. Your socks are. So you just have to look look at different browns and and colors and stuff for their pants. So using all these different colored browns I got. Yeah, so so as even when the English Civil War when it ended, a lot of a lot of the Parliament in the Parliament. Just wanted to put the king back in power. Even even during the war, even though they're fighting the king, he, he was still their king. So they still had loyalty to the king, but they're fighting against the king. 
So even even after the king was captured and his armies defeated, because there was like technically two civil wars. Because he had the first one they fought, they beat him. Then they negotiated for a while with him. After, even when he was captured, he was still treated like the king, negotiating with him. Then he then he was they escaped up to Scotland and they got the Scots to fight the English. As I said, this is a very it gets wild, complicated and who fights who when. And he was defeated again and captured. And they still still want to negotiate with him. Because he was still the king. And Let's see, for the muskets, uh, snake bite for the leather, some gore grunt of fur for the leather. Probably wild wood, because it's a, it's a dark brown. But some in the parliament, uh, like Oliver Cromwell, decided this king, this king, he had enough of this king, so said, oh, let's just put him to death. And wild wood didn't want to do it. Because he, he don't kill royalty. <laughs> but he went out and he executed the king. So there is some metal fittings on here. So I'm looking for my... Oh, there's my silky gray. Which kind of shocked all of Europe. It said... If the people could put the king to death, it's like, oh, no royalty is safe. So... Then when Parliament started doing some stuff, Cromwell decided, no, I'll take, the, I'll just take over government. I'll become the king, protector, not king. He's a protector. So until he died, his son tried it, but he didn't have the same personality. So Parliament afterwards invited the, his uh, King Charles' son back, Charles II, to become king of England. Here we go again. He came back, then he ruled for a while, then he died, then his, then his son, then his brother took over. Then Parliament said, no, we don't, King James took over, and um, King James was Catholic, and Parliament did not want a Catholic king, so what started the what became known as the Glorious Revolution, and William the William the Third of Holland was invited to, to come over and become King of England. So, <laughs> yeah, religious religion and politics it was very. Uh, this kind of all came after. It was very up because at the same time, like the English Civil War was going on, the Thirty Years' War was going on in over in Europe, and this was more or less kind of an extension. It was, but wasn't. But it didn't start off quite the same, but with religious overtones that ended up between the between the Protestants and Catholics, you couldn't help but get get involved so yeah so the whole the whole thing was a, a mess so afterwards hey like, there during the war it's like the regiments were raised by the different between um nobility and rich landowners or merchants and if he had money, you could raise a regiment. To raise a regiment, you basically you paid for and everything for the for you, and you bought all their guns, their equipment, clothing. You choose what color clothing you want them to have. That's what gets really confusing for a while. Is that you could have same colored you uh, colored units on both sides during a battle. So you have white. So. When you're fighting, you, sometimes, if, especially if you, after all the musket smoke and stuff's on the field, you, everything starts getting all, all 
like jeweled and stuff, you really had to find out who's and who. There's, but there was a lot of instances of friendly fire because you could just could not recognize. So if that regiment, a white, white coated regiment, is marching towards you, is that your allied regiment or is that the enemy's regiment? So like I said there was instances of a lot of friendly fire back and forth with each other. And fighting with each other, they realize, oh, hey, we're the same, we're the same side. Oops. Muskets are done. Now, on the, on there, they, for the hair, hair to me, I don't really worry about um, different color hairs and stuff like that. So you can go with any color brown or any hair color. So. I'm just going to go with suit, this Gargak sewer. It's a it's a dark brownish black. It works good for hair. So through, so a lot of the war, that's how the regiments were. Oh, once you get to like the second civil war, that's a whole different thing. You still had different multicolored regiments and stuff like that, but at that time, by that time, um, Parliament was forming the new modeled army, which in English history was the first raised, equipped, and fielded completely by Parliament or by the government in England. As I said before that, it was all individual nobles and stuff had their own forces, and you had the king, king had his personal guard. But this, the new model army, was all run by the government, not by individual person. And they were, and they were trained too. So they were a, a very good force because they were the, the standing army of Eng England, the first Eng full truly English army. And the British army doesn't trace their colors from here but they were all dressed in red so, but most English forces traced their colors back during the glorious revolution period when that when Parliament raised another another army to fight King James I and um, which was red coated too yeah technically that was a civil war too But a lot of the fighting was done not on English soil, but in Ireland, and between Irish and Dutch. A lot, a lot more, a lot of because when William brought his Dutch army over, and England had to build a new army, and that's where most of the British regiments traced their lineage back to the start in there. So, but they kept the red jackets, and so and you can't have an English army without red jackets, so. They they have like a like a uh, I would call it a bread bag, and that go with a light color. Uh, like I was doing that's a light color, like light, lightish brown color. Mix it up. And, Yeah, uh, yeah. After you get their their coat jackets painted, it's like there's no wrong way to, wrong way to paint them because all their equipment was made by local contractors and stuff like that. So there can be any any color that you can think of was used, and just like any big government purchases equipment. Can be whatever, depending on um, what you use and stuff like that. Can be any quality. Some of the stuff was cheap. Some was some stuff was really good.
Uh, this comes down to what you want to use, what paints, your colors you got set. So I, I'm using contrast, but you can use regular paints too. So. So add up. Most are right. If you're doing like the leathers and stuff, most of the leather was buff, which is almost wasn't wasn't white or um, black. And it wasn't dyed or anything. It was just natural buff leather. So usually, when I get that, I'm, I'm going to use. Let's see, where is on the side? Satchel's on this left side on this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, oh, he has two bags, so. Much, much more than that. This paint about this color. He has it under his bandolier. So he has he has some leathers for his bandolier and stuff, and I'm gonna use uh, Azric yellow for the bandoliers, and he has belts too. So. Let's find all the leather. Because he has a bandolier, which has all his uh, powder flasks on. Because he has a main powder flask for his fine powder, which goes into the priming pan of the of of the matchlock. Not a musket, the matchlock. Then he has uh, it, uh, his wooden um, uh, uh, dolls filled with powder with a cap on it. Which each has a measured powder charge. You pop it up, pour it down. Then you have a little bag for your musket balls. Pour everything in your musket. And you prime it with your priming powder, which is in the flask on your hip. And you, sl and you take your match lock, which is a slow match. Which is a piece of cord that burnt slowly. And uh, touch off your gun and you reload. Reloading is basically the same as a regular musket. Pour the powder down and get your you got a wooden ramming rod. rod. You, you didn't have uh, bayonets with these guys, so we went ahead hand to hand combat. Basically, if you looked at the musket on the back, they got this wide buttstock on it. It was, and what they would do, there was. Reversed the muskets, carried the muskets to the top, and that became a big hatchet. We went hand to hand with them. So, when they went to hand to hand, it was brutal with those with with the muskets because they can do some damage when they smashed into you. And a lot of units, as the war progressed, became as Puritans, which they believe they were right, they were on a holy crusade against Catholics. It became re really brutal, brutal on both sides when they when those those guys ran into each other. Because there were some instances of no no quarter given between each against each other and stuff. So it <coughs> oh, sorry, it became really brutal. I think sometimes you had fathers and sons and brothers on both sides going after each other that way. So just like any civil war, it split up families and up between each other. 
there's quite a few families that fought on both sides. Their father believed in the king, so they went and fought for the king, while the sons believed in parliament. Just like any, like I said, not, there's no difference between any of the civil wars. The American Revolution in the South, that split families right down the middle. But basically, saying the fathers fought, fathers believed in the king, but their sons believed in in the uh, U.S. government and the colonialist government. Uh, read about some of the stories, like North Carolina and stuff with the Scots. That was a brutal civil war there too, because you had the the Scots that fled after the Jacobite Wars who still held held a grudge against the government and you had uh, Scots who uh, supported the government and they fought each other there too so <coughs> dry alright got the bandoliers done so what they got left I got the I got the metal to do. Got the powder flask. I'm going to eh, his shoes and the so. Oh, I forgot. It. Yeah, his socks. Oh, yeah. You know, more you look. I guess I always say I forgot some flesh right there. He has the socks. He has the little ties, which can be different colors if you want to, and his hats. So. I said, getting close to being completed with these guys. So it doesn't take very much. So the socks, they're going to be gray. Because uh, they're a wool socks. And I'm going to use soul blight gray, which is like a lighter lighter gray. If it's too light, then I might mix this with basilica gray and darken it up a little bit. I think the basilica uh, might be a little bit. No, actually, I'm going to go with the gray because it's probably gray wool socks. So I think this be all right. So let's see. As I said, if you're not quite sure, paint it out. Yeah, yeah. Nice. The shoes are going to be dark brown, so I wouldn't matter if you can go over those. Get a little overpaint on those. There you go. And also, with a dark gray, I'm also going to do all the metal in dark gray, too. So basically, it's going to be the musket barrel. The uh, the metal works around the match. Um, yeah, around the mat here, the barrel, and the the metal for the. Um, yeah, I do that metal. Just... And basically, that's all the metals on them. There's not very much. Most of it's leather and wood. So... But... The sword. I think about one thing that do research is the swords a lot, a lot of um book and said they don't know if musketeers carried uh, the, the muskets carried swords some regiments state that they were issued swords but a lot of them don't so so a lot of things they didn't they didn't carry swords because they just had their muskets as their close combat weapons but there is some recording that they that they were issued swords, but 
but they just, a lot of them just used their muskets for close combat. Yeah, he still had a while to go before um, bayonets came in. It's mostly... Eventually, when bayonets were finally developed, and were useful. Because the first bayonets were plugged bayonets, actually plugged right into your barrel, so... If you used your bayonets, you couldn't shoot your gun. But once socketed bayonets, which went around the barrel, finally were developed and used, and that's when the pike units finally went went away. Because you don't you don't need pikes to cover your muskets reloading. You just fix you just have your bayonets fixed, and you automatically have your pike wall. <laughs> One more guy. Okay. Now, this guy has a metal helmet. Let me paint that too. It's all metal. Make sure I get all the, the socks. All right. There you go. I'm trying to look at something different here to make this one. Uh, the camera doesn't. doesn't. That one will focus quite. There we go. So, okay. So, I got the match lock done. Oops. Yeah. There you go. So, I don't, for their, uh, Sword scabbards. I'm, I'm gonna paint them brown. Snake bike leather. You can do them black too if you want to. But yeah, he doesn't have one. But I love them to have their uh, powder flasks, which were leather too. So I'm gonna do that in snake snake bike brown too. There's a little dub. I just uh, there you go. So you have a they have a a powder flask which was leather. So let me use that there. Fill in. But that he he didn't have one. Sword scabbard. Yeah. So once you get into a, a period that you want to do, and you just do the minimum amount of reading, you're going to find out it's not all what different shows like. You watch like the movie Cromwell. Yeah, it didn't quite go down like it did in the movie, but. 
it's still a good movie, but it, because if you read about Oliver Cromwell, he wasn't really well known, and it wasn't a really, really known guy like they did in the movie. They kind of built up Cromwell's uh, more important than he really was. And during the battle sequences, they basically used red for the royalist and orange. Then Cromwell built did his army. They did a little bit different, but they used a lot of brown too for the Parliament, like civilian colors and stuff. But in real life, it was a very colorful armies on both sides. Yeah, because you actually can paint every every regiment a different color, so it doesn't get monotonous painting. The same one over and over again. So, on the bottom of the pantoons, they had uh, ties, which are string ties made out of ribbons, a ribbon tie, to tie off the top bottom of their pants. And, and those can be in any color, in all different colors you want to. So, I'm going to do a mixture of different colors just to break up the, add a little variety to them. So, I'm going to use a thinner brush for this so you can use reds blues greens purples and that's another nice thing about this side. you can actually paint army armies in your own color so, so if you like purple they're purple coated regiments and green and every, every, almost any co any spectrum color there was so so if you do like a whole regiment, you can do all the ribbons in the same color if you want to. It doesn't really matter. But since I'm doing like a skirmish level, I'm I'm breaking up the variety because it's just easier. The paint and stuff. So a little orange. So you just go through, paint, paint the ribbons, and usually it was in a a brighter color. I'm I'm gonna be washing this now and any with with a darker wash. So you can basically use almost any color you want. My overwash is going to take care of everything else. So let's get those done. All right. It also it's nice uh so if you're doing like like this one here it has like maroon pants you just do a green it has a little clash of color to it so so, so it depends on what era what part of the war you want to do so i say if you want to do late war then you can have the parliaments all in red for a new model. And you'd be fighting lots of Scots. And a lot of Scottish units wore, wore different colors too. But a lot of them, but they wore the, the 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 blue beret. Or that style hat. Not beret, but it's that blue floppy hat and stuff. That you'd find a lot of gray. Mid-tones and stuff. Now, next thing is the, uh, is the powder charges. Which are the bandolier. Here's 
Yeah, he has very little powder charges on it. Mandolier and stuff. Now, these can be painted brown or different colors. Um, some regiments had them all painted blue because that's the manufacturer they got them from. Blue, red, some were painted green. Some were left unpainted because once you painted them, it actually protects the wood from the elements and stuff. So, and your powder charges, you don't want to get dirty. So, these ones I'm going to paint red because it just, just makes them stand out. So, you can paint them any color you want. So, that's what's nice about a lot of these. You can, there is some leeway to add your own personalization to it. So, if you want. So you just go through, paint them. And since this is all the same regiment, I'm just going to have all these guys red because that's whatever company they bought them from. That's the color they used the color, the waterproof them. And the man who raised it had the extra money to pay for paint. So saves you money in the long run. If you bought unpainted ones, they start rot and stuff, then you have to replace them. So I just kind of be careful. Just go through and paint them up. So after this, we're gonna be we're gonna go for the hats, and they had a plethora of different kind of hats. So if you're doing a particular regiment, some they say could afford more. They wore the metal helmets, uh, but most of the regiments, the guys just furnished their own hats. So you could some had knit knit caps, um, cloth caps, uh, large floppy floppy hats. Uh, officers bought their own so, so that's when uh, you can really get some colorful it's like usually the officers didn't wear the uniform color they wore their own color so in the heat of battle and the smoke and stuff if you knew what color your officers wore you could look around if you see that color you knew that was your officer So when you see like officers dressed different color, uh, there was a reason for it. A lot, a lot, a lot of it was like vanity for the more vanity, but there was actually a purpose on the battlefield for that. Because if he was just dressed like everyone else, if you're looking around, you won't see him because we just blend in with all the other troops and stuff. But if he had, if he was in a different color, he just looked for that color. So if he was dressed in like blues and you're like this. White jacketed. Then you looked around and you saw the blue. Also, like the same thing is also they use feathers. So if you knew your officer liked blue and white feathers on this hat, when you look around your line, you see the blue and white feathers, you know that's office, your officer is. And usually where the officer is is the flags. The flags were actually behind the lines. That's, that's another thing is that people don't realize that the flags weren't carried in the front lines. They were, they were moved behind the lines because you don't want your flags to get captured. So I missed a couple areas with the flesh, so I'm just going to... With a thin brush, just... doesn't know how many times you look and... But when you paint something else, you look, oh, I missed that. So I'm just going to double check. Make sure I get everything is look at this mostly in the back that I missed yeah yep, so was... missed his sword 
Uh, did tie while some of this is drying up here. I just go back. There you go. All right. Get the gray guy because I missed one sword. Yeah, once, once everything dries, this is the only metallic parts which are going to be painted would be the metal. With the brass and this metallic, just the definition. Now for the boots, I'm just going to use gore, gore grunted brown, or just dark brown. This is for all the shoes. So just go through and just... Paint the shoes. As like years ago, find out just find it neat is like that shoes they were universal. Shoes can fit. There was no left or right shoes. They just there was the sh shoes. You can put them on either either side, left side, right. Side. If you if you're rich enough and bought custom made. Boots or shoes, then you had, uh, then you could have them made left or right. But most every every work everyday people, there was no left or right. It was just shoes. Didn't matter what what foot they went on. A little worthless trivia there for everyone. <laughs> This on. There you go. Now, a lot of these guys on their shirts, they got um, their undershirt sticking out. And this, this is what... Here's another thing I'm going to paint in white. Let's go back over real quick. So just take your fine brush. And just... Paint. paint. And look up around their collars. A lot of time their shirt came out over the collar. Because a lot of the jackets didn't have collars. So the undershirt became the collar. So like this guy. So this guy had. His shirt stick, sticking out over his collar. Clean it around his. This guy, put the white there. You just have some collar sticking out, so just a little more white there. Put it on the sword there. Yeah, so there there might be some areas where you're going to have to use regular paint just to get the the color of it. I'm just going to go back for the white. He has some color sticking up right there. Just press underneath his hair. He has long hair. There you go. Got his undershirt done. Now he has match cord. Uh, match cord was an off white, so that's another one I'm gonna have to paint on. I'm gonna use ivory, bright ivory, because uh, he has a cup. He has some match cord hanging. This is extra match cord. 
hang in there. Yes, and he has uh, some on this gun here too and stuff. So that's that's all he needs. Yes, match cord or slow match. Is was this, this a piece of like rope in bed with powder, and it slowly burnt. So once you put the powder in the the pan, and ready to fire, you blew on the match, was made it brighter, and then you just touched. So they had a, a, on on your musket back here with a if you know what a footlock is, but they had a match. They had the serpentine, which is what the the cord stuck on. So when you pulled on the lever, it came down and touched. A lot of guys didn't even use that; they just used it in their hand and just held the musket in one hand and just touched it with the other. Just the that they said there was no accuracy because <laughs> there was no sights on these guns. He just the whole regiment pointed at the target. And when they told you to fire, you fire, and you hope you hit something. I said these were smooth bore too, because they had they had rifle muskets at the time. But but early war was just this. Then was that um uh, lock muskets came later, felt lock muskets or came later. But actually, they were actually developed there. They were actually developed um, for the artillery trains, the guys who guarded the powder, because they found out it was a little bit unwise to have an open match around, lit match around gunpowder, which was stored in barrels and stuff. So they, they developed a footlock so there was no burning match. But it was because it was more expensive to develop the footlock or firelock or firelock, that's what they call it. So, but once more and more were produced that slowly came dribbled down into the regiments and the guys who could afford it bought the fire locks for the troops and so fire became more safe because you don't have to maintain that burning match because once that match gets wet it's ruined so a lot of them carry actually you carried it they're not using it under your hat just like the archers in medieval medieval times used to carry their strings in their hats that way it kept Kept the dew and stuff off the strings, bow strings and stuff. All right, now for the hat. Hats can be almost any color you want. So browns, blacks. So I'm going to do some in black because I haven't done any black. Just add a little. And I said most most guys just wore plain old hats. It kept the sun off their eyes. And also help get water too. A lot of people, if you start uh, you start reading what hats like, they were used. To, uh, a lot of cavalry units were issued hats because it helped water the horses. Because <laughs> they take water to the horses. If there you go. I'm going to do two in black and one in brown. This one. And I'm going to do one in brown. And so this is where you can use the same color color. I'm going to use Snake Bite for his hat, too. Yeah, Snake Bite. The one brunt I love. I use this for everything. So, you don't have a brown hat. There we go. There you go. Now. Basically, they're almost done. Oh, I got one guy with a knit cap. Now, knit caps can be any color you want, and I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to give him a yeah. I'm going to go with an Indian yellow. I'm going to give him a yellow hat. Something his wife made for him. Yeah. 
Yep, either the wives made it for them or uh, they bought them from, um, from, the, uh, from all the tradesmen and stuff that followed the armies around. Now, I'm going to go with uh, some natural steel. Technically, the, the barrel wouldn't... Usually, a lot of the barrels are painted black and the metal is painted black and stuff. Like, but I just like to use the metal just to make it stand out. Just like... Just give like the light. Gleam it off of it. And uh, the swords, I'm going to give them all brass hilt. Most, a lot of swords are brass hilted, so. They weren't fancy swords. They were just cheap mass produced swords. So something that soldiers could stick, some in the, stick another soldier with. That's all they were good for. Officers, you can do fancy. You can have gilt, gold gilted. You have gilted swords and stuff. They can afford to buy really good made swords. So almost done. Yeah, and this guy. Yeah. So, we'll just do the we do the brass, and for the metals I use AK metallics. They're brass and natural steel. I really like these colors. They're really heavy, pigmented, so the metallic is really good at them. So let's go through. Now, for the one guy who had the helmet, a lot of the helmets and stuff that were like the, they painted, they were painted black. So what I'm going to do. Hey, I painted that basilica gray, which was a dark gray. Then I'm going to take some white, and I'm going to lightly dry brush it. So the effect I'm going for is it was painted now, the paint's dulling and stuff like that. There you go. A non metallic metal. So it just gives a, a like it was painted black, but it's fading, chipping off, and stuff like that. So it's just a different kind of look. I said you can paint it metal if you want to and fancy, but so oh and I did miss. I say you always look. This guy has a dagger in his belt, so the, the daggers were just really plain. There were nothing fancy to them, so I'm just a little. This is like a gray. Not, nothing fancy at all. This is a dagger he picked up or bought somewhere, traded someone for, just to finish off a rich nobleman so he can get his purse on the field. Now, whatever happened in the field stayed on the field. So, and that's it. That's the first unit. Now, they're not completed yet. I'm, I'm going to put a wash over them. I don't know if Kimi doesn't like to focus on these things. Focus. Okay, because he he's basically done. Um, he's good enough now to field if he wanted to. But I'm going to say I'm going to put one more layer on him. Once he's 
which is going to be the wash. Well, that's as soon as it's going to highlight everything. So I'll be back as soon as these dry. I'll show you how to put the wash on. Then they'd be good to hit the field. Oh, and then it, then the bases. But I'm, I'm, it'll be a separate video coming out how I'm going to do the bases. So because I got quite a few things that need bases. So I'm going to show that. So I, I don't know if I do it in this video. I'm going to make a separate video. I'll do it in this video just to show how they finish. But how everything's washed. That it'd be all completed ready to field. So it'd be back in a bit. All right. Um, these guys are fully done. Let me try this. Get focusing. There you go. But, yep. So, there he is. So, so, he's basically done. So, with this, I'm going to put a wash on him, which, which will make or It'll dark them up a little bit and make it a little bit more uh, road worn. So, all I'm going to use oil based paint. Don't need very much of this stuff. And some mineral spirits. Make sure it's clear mineral spirits because there's there's also a like a milky colored ones too. Just gotta make sure it's clear. And this is clear odorless. So there there is no smell. And a cheap paintbrush. All yeah. So when you get the mineral spirits, make sure it's odorless mineral spirits. So if not, your whole house is going to be smelling very strong. Now this is where it takes some practicing and stuff on on your washes and stuff to figure out what color, so how dark you want it, because um you can go dark and light. So what is I'm going to put this on here. And actually, it's a perfect color. So what it does, it just runs into all the nooks and crannies and stuff. And just, to me, it darkens them up, makes them a little bit more road-worn. These guys have been on the road. And also, when this dries, all the, the oil... We'll actually leave a film over it, which will help bind the paint onto the. Let's make sure you get all. I say, if, if, if you put it on, it's too heavy. Then take some mineral spirits, put another bowl clear, just play it. Take it, take the paintbrush and just go over it. It'll, it'll take that paint right off. So you can thin it down. That's it. It's, it's going to dry. It's, it's going to take a bit longer to dry. But once he's dry, it's going to be it, it, it's going to be nice and solid. So I said, if it's a nice day outside, nice sunny day, dry, dry, you take it outside, set outside, it'd be dried within an hour. Because that oil will evaporate off faster than leaving the house off. But, and that's it. And uh, I think I spent, uh, I don't know, like a half an hour painting five miniatures. They're already done. So like in an hour, you can paint 10 miniatures. And I said, in a couple hours, I can have all these guys painted right now. So there's nothing fancy about it. But it gets miniatures on the table and they actually look quite good. So, so that's all I have for today. Um, next, uh, I, I, I'm not going to paint the rest of the Musketeers on camera, but I might do the Pikemen and the office and the officer and the sergeant separate one. So, because officer, you can really paint flamboyant which is this guy this guy's gonna be flamboyant this guy had some money to spend so he's gonna do 
he's gonna be spending some money on himself because you got you gotta look good you gotta look good for your uh, in front of the enemy all right so until later guys keep painting let's get let's get some painted troops on the board <laughs>